Step into the world of a classic TV series from 1957 that has left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Leave it to Beaver introduces us to the Cleaver family, giving us a peek into the everyday life of a suburban American household. This show is well known for its simplicity and relatability, offering more than what meets the eye. As you watch, get ready for a mix of emotions as the series unfolds with funny, surprising, and even sad moments. There's a lot more beneath the surface that might catch you off guard. What makes this series stand the test of time? Think about its lasting qualities that have turned it into a symbol of the industry that keeps going. The answer might lie in the universal themes it explores, connecting with people across generations. Ever thought about lesser known facts or interesting stories about this classic? The series has many untold tales that could grab your interest. As you recall your favorite memories or personal experiences with this well-loved show, feel free to share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences make the narrative richer, turning it into a shared journey through the world of Leave It to Beaver. There's more to uncover, so keep watching and join the conversation. Your insights are important. The pilot episode of the TV series introduced characters played by Hugh Beaumont and Tony Dow. However, in this initial episode, Richard Deacon portrayed a different character than Fred Rutherford. Viola Rutherford appeared before Lumpy in the series, and during a picnic involving the Rutherfords and the Clevers, she sat on Beaver's lap in the front seat of Fred's car. Notably, Lumpy was not mentioned in this particular episode. In another installment, the characters explored Crystal Falls and a town close to Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. The boys embarked on a bus trip and later, Eddie's parents were depicted as frequently visiting Freeport, which is in proximity to the Cleveland area in Ohio. These geographical details prompt speculation about the Clever family's location. The series showcased various episodes, one involving a weekend at Shadow Lake. Given the existence of a Shadow Lake near Dayton, Ohio, it adds weight to the notion that the Clevers resided in Ohio. The dynamics among the characters presented interesting discrepancies. Wally and the Beaver appeared to have an age gap of about six years. Episodes depicted Beaver and his friends in second grade, while Wally, Eddie, and their friends were portrayed as eighth graders. However, inconsistencies arose, such as when Wally joined the Boy Scouts at the age of 12, while the Beaver was going on eight. Despite these inconsistencies, the show remains a cherished series for many viewers. Its timeless appeal continues to connect with audiences, offering valuable lessons for both kids and families alike. As a viewer reminisces about watching reruns in the early 1970s, the portrayal of an all-American family, though set in the 1950s, transcends generations. The character's relatability and the show's lasting quality leave a lasting impression, making it a source of fond memories for those who experienced it. A big thank you is extended to everyone involved in the production. The show's influence on viewers, as seen through the nostalgia and admiration expressed, speaks to its lasting effect. In a world where such shows are rare today, the sentiment of longing for the simplicity and valuable life lessons presented remains palpable. In the course of Leave it to Beaver's production, the house on Universal's back lot, initially serving as the exterior for the Cleaver's second home, later gained recognition as Marcus Welby's residence in Marcus Welby, M.D. Hugh Beaumont, in one of his final acting roles just a year before retiring, made a guest appearance on Marcus Welby in 1970, coincidentally finding the venerable Dr. Welby inhabiting the same house. A revelation surfaces about the Cleaver family's dwellings during the series. In an episode titled Beaver's Old Friend, Beaver mentions a third house from their past, referencing a time when he had measles at the other house. This adds an intriguing layer to the Cleaver's residential history, offering a glimpse into unseen aspects of their lives. Dispelling a popular misconception, it's clarified that Alice Cooper, the notorious rock legend, did not portray Eddie Haskell on the show. The rumor emerged from a misinterpretation of Cooper's statement where he identified with Eddie Haskell's behavior during his younger years rather than claiming to have portrayed the character. The series, while showcasing the Cleaver family in two homes, subtly hints at a previous residence, expanding the narrative canvas. Hugh Beaumont's crossover appearance in Marcus Welby, MD, adds an unexpected connection between two distinct TV universes. Meanwhile, the revelation of an earlier house in Leave It to Beaver offers a deeper understanding of the character's history. Contrary to a later surfaced rumor involving Alice Cooper, it becomes clear that Eddie Haskell was not played by the rock legend. This clarification highlights the importance of accurate information, dispelling myths surrounding the show's cast. 
The untold stories and connections between characters and actors continue to add layers to the timeless appeal of Leave it to Beaver, making it a rich and multi-dimensional experience for viewers. Unveiling the origins ever wondered how the titular character got his peculiar nickname on the show. In an unexpected twist, it's revealed only in the finale. Wally, struggling to pronounce Theodore, coined a term somewhere between Tweeter and Beaver. Eventually, the quirky moniker stuck, becoming a household name. Lost, and found the pilot episode of the series faced obscurity for years, disappearing into the depths of television history. However, in 1987, it resurfaced, marking a momentous discovery for fans and historians alike. Synchronicity with history, the inaugural episode of Leave it to Beaver aired on the very day the Soviets launched Sputnik. This peculiar coincidence places the show in a unique historical context, mirroring the technological advancements and global events of the time. These snippets provide a deeper understanding of the show's genesis, a journey from whimsical nicknames to lost and found episodes, all set against the backdrop of significant historical events. The revelations about character names and the show's unexpected connection to world events add layers to the legacy of this classic TV series. Dive into the untold facets and connections, exploring the nuances that make Leave it to Beaver a timeless piece of television history. Jerry Mathers, who ultimately landed the lead role in the iconic series, impressed casting directors during his audition. Wearing his Cub Scout uniform, Mathers candidly expressed his eagerness to leave for a den meeting, a charming moment that secured his place as the titular character. Notably, in the pilot episode, a young Harry Shearer played the role of Frankie. The ensemble cast featured distinct vehicles for characters, with Wally's car being a 1953 Chevrolet Bel Air convertible, Eddie driving a 1947 Dodge, and Lumpy navigating a 1944 convertible. The series, set in a suburban American household, presented geographical nuances, hinting at the Cleaver family's potential location in Ohio. Despite discrepancies in characters' ages and grade levels, the relatability of the Cleavers resonated with audiences, creating a timeless connection that transcended generations. A revelation about the series' production unveils the dual purpose of the house on Universal's back lot, initially the Cleavers' exterior and later Marcus Welby's residence. Hugh Beaumont's crossover appearance in Marcus Welby, MD adds an unexpected link between two TV universes. Additionally, the mention of a third house in an episode provides a glimpse into the Cleaver's residential history. Dispelling a misconception, it's clarified that rock legend Alice Cooper did not portray Eddie Haskell. The series, while showcasing two homes, subtly hinted at a previous residence, adding depth to the narrative. These untold stories and connections enhance the multi-dimensional experience for viewers. The article delves into the origins of the titular character's nickname, revealing an unexpected twist in the finale. The pilot episode, once lost to television history, resurfaced in 1987, becoming a significant discovery. A synchronicity with history is noted as the inaugural episode coincided with the Soviets launching Sputnik, placing the show in a unique historical context. From whimsical nicknames to lost and found episodes and a connection to global events, these insights provide a deeper understanding of Leave it to Beaver's legacy, making it a timeless piece of television history.